25th day of December when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness. When century upon century had passed, since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees. In the 13th century since the people of Israel were led by Moses, in the exodus from Egypt. Around the two thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the sixty-fifth week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the one hundred and ninety-fourth Olympiad. In the year seven hundred and fifty-two, 
since the foundation of the city of Rome. In the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the world being at peace, Jesus Christ, an eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas is finally here. Tonight is Holy Night. It is a night of peace. It is a night of love. It is a night of hope. And it is a night of joy. It is a night to reflect the deep meaning of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. It is a night to enjoy in our family and in our communities. Especially, it is a night to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Let us joyfully receive the gift of Jesus Christ and bring him the light of Christmas to others. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the secret mysteries. I confess to oh God and to do my brothers and sisters in my in my words. To my son. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant we pray that we who have known the mysteries 
of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today's born of 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping watch, the night watch, over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we call tonight the holy night. Tonight, we see the light shining in the darkest season, the fire blazing in the cold of winter, life stirring in the quietness of the year. Tonight, the divine light of Christ incarnates in a tiny baby, in a lowly manger. Tonight, we are entering deeply on the great gift from God, that is Jesus Christ, God's eternal word becoming flesh, Emmanuel, God coming to dwell with us and enter into the lives of all people. Christmas is finally here. It is a time to reflect the deep meaning of the incarnation of the Son of God. It is a time to enjoy family and friends. It is a time to share gifts of love and hope. It is the, the one day of the year when peace on earth, goodwill to all people seem to be a reality. Each year when Christmas comes around, it brings people together. Family members come from afar to be together and celebrate Christmas. Our children come home from college and school. We host a big family dinner at our house. Gifts are exchanged. It is a wonderful time of the year. And these things are important in the celebration of Christmas. However, Christmas is much more than families getting together to celebrate a holy day. It is far much more than exchanging gifts with those we love. It is far more important than a few days away from work. Christmas is not only God's gift to the world, but it is God's personal gift to every one of us. Today the Son of God is born and everything changes. The Savior of the world comes to partake of our human nature. No longer are we alone or forsaken. The Virgin Mary offers us her son as the beginning of a new life. The true light has come to illuminate our lives. Today we once more discover who we are, God's beloved children, and that means we must put away all fears and disappointments because the light shows us the path to a little town called Bethlehem. Let us be with the shepherds to see our Savior lying in a manger. It is the reason for our joy. This baby has been born to us. He was given to us, as prophet Isaiah proclaims. Christmas enables its one of us to grow in holiness. It gives us a whole new identity. Our identity is bound up in this gift of Christmas. In this gift and grace, we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. No one is excluded from this message. 
No one is excluded from this gift. It is a gift for the weak and the poor, the sick and the suffering, the sin and the sinner, for the afflicted and the vulnerable, for everyone suffering physically, mentally, and spiritually. It is for everyone. Indeed, Christmas means that God is with us, that God is one of us, that God is closer than we ever know. The baby Jesus was born in the darkness. Some of us are going through our own times of darkness. We are feeling down and out. The mother with three children whose husband has left. The couples who want babies and cannot conceive. A husband who just lost wife. The families have the members who are losing their job. The poor feel out of place when they see the splendor of others. Some people are struggling with additions. Some people among us tonight who dwell in a kind of darkness. Christmas is for them, for you, for me, and for each one of us. Christmas embodies the very good news that God dwells among us. He enlightens our darkness. This is the reason why we celebrate Christmas every year. Jesus desires to enter into our brokenness and darkness so that he can bring his light into and transform us. Brothers and sisters, the grace of Christmas is also meant to build up the body of Christ, the church. As we enter into the grace of Christmas, Jesus is born anew in our lives, a rebirth in our souls. As Mary carried Jesus in her womb and gave birth to salvation, so we are called to carry Jesus from our hearts and into the world as Mary did. Christ, who took on human flesh, must be made present through its one of us. We see ourselves as part of Christ's body and proclaim this good news of great joy through our words and actions. Then the Christmas story comes alive and the miracle of Christmas becomes a true reality in our world. We are so blessed. We are the church. We are the body of Christ on earth. God himself has called this one of us and appointed us, disciples of Christ, to share this good news. What we celebrate today is love because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. We must be ready to share this love. God sent Christ out of love. Christ accepted to come to us because of his love for us. Today, we celebrate sacrifice because Jesus' life is a sacrifice to God and to the mankind. We are also called to be ready to sacrifice our life for the good of our brothers and sisters. Today, we celebrate humility. We learn humility from Christ, who even though was rich, became poor for our sake. Yes, he was born in the loneliest place, the manger. Today, we celebrate peace because the Prince of Peace is with us. And today, we celebrate hope because Jesus Christ's birth is the hope for our salvation. And finally, today is a day of joy as the angel declares that, do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. 
for today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and the Lord. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. My dear brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and meditate the incarnation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we are trusting in God's love and mercy. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to God, the Almighty Father. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that as she celebrates the birth of Christ, she may grow in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who do not yet believe in Christ, that they may know that today a Savior is born for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, that nations may resolve their conflicts by giving themselves over to Christ, the Prince of Peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are alone or abandoned, for the oppressed and the hungry, the homeless, the elderly and the unborn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the sick of our families and our parish, that they may join their sufferings to the sufferings of Christ, and that they may be healed and comforted, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, that by the power of Christ's birth on earth, they may be born in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Let us bring before the Lord the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For our prayers and for the parishioners of St. Boniface Parish, that the Lord may graciously hear and answer our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty ever-living God, thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, who becomes one of us today. Receive and answer our prayer in your love and mercy according to your holy will. We are this through Christ, O oh Lord.
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Good job. Yes. For the praise and glory of his name. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the world made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our might, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as we thou and we acclaim. Therefore, the gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in his unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by the by teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace, and peace.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, O God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may grow through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And a Merry Christmas again to everybody. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas season. And thank you so much for the choir, for wonderful music, for wonderful service today. Thank you so much. You did a very good job. Yeah. And I hope you find joy, hope, faith, love, and peace in your family in this holy season. And you find uh, your joy in your party, in your family, friendship, and in your heart. Thank you very much. And now, can you bow down for final blessing? May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you and the darkness of vice, and illuminate your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who wills that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you share sharers with the church in heaven. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify Thank the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.